The pedals are right here, and when you switch one, the mechanism actually goes up through the column where it connects to the neck. Um, with this, the column and neck don't join in the same way. So if the pedals were here, um, it's just a bit of a question of what each pedal would actually do because there are four harps at play, right? Like, would we want one pedal to switch all four of them? Would it be four times three pedals with 12 Oh, pedals one pedal per harp so that you can be mixing. Yeah, but it, it just gets, it gets to be a lot and the mechanism just has more corners, so it becomes a lot more complicated, I suspect, mechanically. Um, but you can still do manually on the actual tuning pegs. Yeah, so I'm, I'm still going to have a... So, on like a standard faux carp, there's the tuning peg where you tune it, and then right below that is switch to sharp it. Um, and I'll still have that. But it looks like the person who's playing it, uh, or rather, the people who are playing it from the outside, because it's an instrument that you could play from in jail or outside of jail, right. um, will be standing at the corners and they'll have access to a bass harp here and here, and a tenor harp here and here, oh, if I go with this four harp per side setup. Because the issue I was running into initially was that uh, I just had like five times too many octaves. The concert grand has 47 strings, and just basing this out with standard string spacing. What's 47 strings? Three and a half octaves? Four octaves? No, it's um, seven and a half. It's seven and a half octaves? Yeah. Really? Yep. Oh uh, no, six and a half. Yeah. Almost seven. Because it's seven notes per octave. Okay. Um, but I was looking at having not 47 strings, not... Uh, 94 strings, but about 220 strings per side, which worked out to a harp jail under about 30 tons of tension. Oh my god. Uh, wow. and, and also to like way more notes than you need. Also, just technically, I was looking at the length of string that would be required to catch that many octaves. And if the smallest string was six inches and the strings were all the same material, which they're not, but you know, for the sake of research assuming that all the strings would be the same diameter and material, the longest string needed to be something like 35,000 kilometers in order to keep the octave the progression up. So, instead we're doing four harps per side, and it seems like it would be a playable instrument that way. Could you theoretically, instead yeah. of doing two basses and two tenors, do, do four different things? Yeah, because wouldn't it effectively be the same size if you match the soprano with the bass and the tenor and the alto? I don't... Uh, you will have to tell me about that. I Again, don't know I'm how... I'm not a musician or a harp player or a jail maker, so like I'm, <laughs> I'm still... Um, I've got a lot of uh, expertise that I require. So you're, you're actually going to construct this? I'm going to start by making... So the idea comes from the conversation I had a year and a half ago with Anna from Germany. She's uh, doing her PhD, she's probably finished now, she was doing her PhD in the philosophy of love in Gießen in Germany. And an image that we came to was the idea of a relationship as two instruments being strung into each other, like a guitar here and a guitar here, crossing strings, and how different combinations of instruments and different kinds of instruments would produce really different joined instruments together, some of which would have their strings like scraping against each other and re would require some insane acrobatics of the hand just to play a clean note, much less to make a nice chord, and how some combinations could be kind of playable, as playable as a guitar, and others might be completely unplayable except would produce one really beautiful chord. And we, we were just talking about this metaphor which led me, later on, to think of a metaphor for dealing with life, an image of having a heart, like a wall, dividing two characters, and on one side would be you, um, facing the heart, and what I saw on the other side was like a little Hieronymus Bach monkey demon with a beak and skates just like wailing against the harp like raking its claws against it and making like some kind of terrible noise and I thought of the 
the idea of just coping with life, coping with the things outside of you and inside of you that are foreign to you and outside of your agency as being kind of like as gracefully as you could, muting notes that the monkey demon was playing and introducing notes here and there to try to turn that cacophony into a song. If that was possible, then, you know, maybe if you did that for a hundred years, you might end up with, across that whole time, half an hour of nice music. Maybe that's enough for a good life. Um, and that just kind of led into this idea of not just separating the two players, but actually containing one of them and uh, building a more complex relationship where there could be more figures in this story. Um, and making that relationship unlevel. So in that image, the person playing and the monster on the other side could be equals. But I wanted to get a bit more specific and make those two roles different. Mm. And also, I mean, a jail is visually it's so much like a harp already yeah you know um i think i mean it doesn't seem like a stretch at all it seems like a there's a really obvious congruence between the two objects in a jail cell and the strings of a harp yeah so harp jail 101